Welcome to Star Tales. Stories of stars, their journeys, inspirations, motivation and more. We are all set to welcome our guest for today. We have Sham Manier with us today. Sham is the VP of Engineering at Cisco, Core Software Group. Welcome Sham. It is a pleasure conversing with you. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you Rama? I'm doing great Sham. So far so good. Uh, Sham, can you tell us a little bit about your journey in tech? Any episode, incident that you think contributed to what you are today? Uh, yeah, let me start. Actually, um, I started my journey back in Bangalore about uh, back how many 30 years back. So I joined after doing my master's at IIT Kanpur, I joined Wipro Infotech. And as part of that, I was always into building products, even if at that time, 30 years back, uh, Wipro was into building products, not only consulting services. Mm. As part of that, I really built my skill as an engineer. And then I did projects with Sun Microsystems, UB Networks. And in 97, I decided to join uh, Cisco. And as part of uh, Cisco, it's almost 23 years. and. My main contribution has been building multi-billion dollar, very successful products. So I still remember in back in 97, uh, I was in uh, East Coast and uh, I got an offer to move to West Coast to build a brand new Catalyst product line called C Catalyst 8500. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was just engineer, moved into technical leadership. And it was a very small team, about 10 engineers. So we ended up building everything, whatever we could build, whether it's a micro code, control plane, protocols, we built a complete first ever uh, L3 enabled uh, switch. But the real turning point in my career came when I decided to join uh, CRS1 team. We used to call as the HFR team. Uh, I joined as the first manager with no reports and then really build a team of multiple engineers, very good engineers. In fact, some of those engineers are still with me, uh, working with me after 22, 21 years nearly. Wow. And so uh, two things I learned, how to build a top-notch uh, top team, how to build the product from ground up, and also how to integrate the teams because at that time two teams got merged and we uh, integrated and really deliver after four years of very uh, innovative work we delivered the product which really changed the internet as we know it that was the real start of building the massively scalable uh, internet and i'm really proud of that achievement and i i feel that that was the changing moment of my career because after that, I ended up building two or three more multi-billion dollar products, whether it's ASR 9000 or recently Catalyst 9000. And the same formula I kind of applied on how to build teams, how to deliver products uh, with the architecture foundation and make it successful. Sure. Well, what an amazing journey, Sham. Uh, very inspiring. So with all the ups and downs you have gone through in your career path, um, how did you overcome those? Any particular mantra you followed, Sham? And uh, 30 years back in Bangalore, which has now become the silicon hub of India, and now we are the silicon uh, hub of the entire world. So how has the journey been and what are the, how did you go through the ups and downs and what, what is your mantra, Sham? I think it's, it's very simple. One is, I think when I was engineer, really try to learn as much as possible and try to contribute in many, many areas as an engineer. I think that is the key. Uh, learning should never stop. Um, and uh, when I became manager and director, this is really uh, trusting the engineers, trusting your teams and not micromanaging them, uh, but empowering them. Uh, but at the same time, making sure that they are guided properly, uh, insisting on the proper architecture foundation. And then once in a while, verifying that uh, things are uh, on the right track. So you mentioned about disruption with CRS and then the massive scale that you brought in, Sham. I see another disruption that has come under your leadership, which is now called the new era of networking. It's a complete disruptive strategy in how Cisco is traditionally operated in terms of their business model, moving away from hardware-based to software-based subscriptions. 
and key contributors are the digital network architecture and also the cat nine case that have churned out and have been shipped under your leadership now that's a huge risk i would say that has been taken and i would like to hear your insights on the risks and the mitigations that you planned and implemented so when we started journey it was really about creating a next generation cat 3k that was the journey but when we started looking into more and more that we said that we have some common foundational elements with us common operating system with ios xc uh, common asic architecture with uh, doppler as well as the common forwarding layer architecture we call as the fed is rk so we say we should change the game instead of building just point products let's build the common architecture where we can build the complete next generation of 2k 3k 4k 6k and call it as a one uniform umbrella product line called cat 9k and uh, so while we are doing that we also thought that let's build for the future let's not just build the usual next generation product so we uh, we put the foundation like a, a new asic the cpu arc uh, the x86 cpu all the capabilities which are required for edge computing and and we did not stop there we said that well while we are we are building this product we should also be looking at the software defined networking we software defined access the internet uh, intent based networking using dnac uh, contro controller led uh, automation assurance so we built all of that and in fact we delivered the first product in cat 9k family in two years since we started the journey and after that within two years we refreshed the complete portfolio mm -hmm. and i can proud, uh, proudly say that as of now in fact maybe today or tomorrow it will reach the 10 billion dollar cumulative revenue cat 9k wow so i'm really proud of the uh, what uh, we as a team achieved nice so risk was so you ask about the risk uh, that is a important question risk was like all of this could fail because uh, one major risk we took was we are not going to sell only uh the hardware it will have mandatory software subscriptions and none of our uh, competition was doing it so it was very easy for customer to say we are not buying we don't buy into your new model of uh, software revenues so we are not buying from you so it was kind of a major risk we took in terms of the business model but it really turned out and then if you listen to our ceo chuck robbins he keeps on saying about software revenues every time and cat 9k is really uh, playing a leading role there yes great awesome so from extreme hardware to extreme technology now i'm going to ask you about design so today um, design has become the talk of the town where the world is taking a design first approach be it for consumers or be it for enterprise application or even uh, designing hardware so what are your thoughts on that and how do you see design playing a role in building an enterprise grade application which will reach out to the millions of people yes so i think uh, again normally when we look at design we always talk about iphone and uh, ipads and airpods i think yeah i like i uh, all my family runs on apple products yeah. so design is very important not on, in consumer for sure but more importantly the way i see in our our field the design is all about the architecture uh, going back to uh, cat 9k example where we put the foundation of a common architecture where the layer common layer we built can can ha has about 10 plus asic architectures underneath and five plus different product lines and 90% of code is common that's what i call it as design so now we can create a brand new product which used to take up about 50 to 100 engineers we can do in 10 to 20 engineers wow that's the benefit of uh, design and then we went further also as as we are learning from apple we also build the hardware aesthetic uh, in terms of the how it looks and feels uh, so that that also we built in our design uh, as you get into more kind of a controller led architecture uh, automation we are paying a lot of attention to how ui ux looks like 
uh, how how the normal see people are used to doing CLIs and not anymore people want to have a click buttons they are used to the apple ecosystem so we are paying a lot of attention to making sure that the today's generation or the generations in front of us can manage very complex uh, task of managing network with a simple uh, design principles uh, that's a great insight uh, sham i think today design has eliminated the entire training process you see in the application even uh, the kind of projects that we design here the task is to eliminate the training process and build it so user friendly that people don't require training anymore so that was great insights from you Shant. not only that people don't read the documentations uh, nowadays uh, even one page documentation is too much uh, so it has to be open it up start start clicking and then it should it should be self entitled so there's a mantra in designing the website so today people don't um, consume content they surf content now if you look at website people keep surfing and they yeah. keep scrolling down until something attractive catches their attention that's you're, right you're right, you're right about the documentation thank you so much sham that was very insightful so i believe um, these are the questions that we have we really appreciate your insights and inputs here sham um thank you so much thank you really appreciate having me on this thank you so much sham thank you you have a nice day have a good day